Praise God. Praise God. I believe you're excited and the Lord is doing a great work in your life in the name of Jesus. Awesomely, today when I was studying the word of God, I came through a portion of scripture that I believe that I want to share with you and it would help you as far as preparing for your life and preparing for the end of your life is concerned. The Bible tells us about a man called David. David who was a man after God's heart. David was a man who, when you read your Bible, you realize that he is the example or he is the zenith. He is one of those people that if we are to talk about someone who loved God, someone who praised God, someone whose heart was committed to God, it was David. But there is something that surprises me when I was reading the Bible. At the end of David's life, there are certain things that he did. At the end of David's life, there are certain instructions he gave to his son. And I believe he understood that at the end of life, one of the things that you have to be wise about is that your heart has to be clean. You can't die holding grudges. And even before you die, you cannot spend a lot of time, such like David did, holding certain issues in your heart. It kills you slowly. When you take your Bible and... You read your Bible in the book of First Kings, chapter number five, chapter number one, chapter number two, verse five. The Bible tells us these are the instructions. I think there are three instructions at the end concerning certain people that David had interacted with in life that he gave to his son Solomon, who was to become king. David says to Solomon in verse number five, the Bible says, Moreover, thou knowest also what Joab, the son of Zuriah, did to me, and what he did to the two captains of the hosts of Israel, and to Abner, the son of Ner, and unto Amasa, the son of Jethar, whom he slew and shed the blood of war in peace. So it means there was no war, but if he killed them and put the blood of war upon his girdle that was about his loins and in his shoes that were on his feet. Therefore, according to thy wisdom, do not let his whole head go down to the grave in peace. Instruction number two. But show kindness unto the sons of Basilai, the Gileadite, and let them be of those that eat at your table, for they came to me when I fled because of your brother Absalom. These are people that took care of David in his time of need when his son wanted to kill him. Number three, this is one, of, one thing that I want you to look at. And behold, thou hast with thee Shimei, the son of Gerah, a Benjamite of Bahurim, which cursed me with a grievous curse in the day when I went into Mahanaim. But he came down to meet me at Jordan, and I swore to him by the Lord, saying, I will not put him to death with a sword. Now, therefore, hold him not guiltless, meaning hold him as someone who's guilty. For you are a wise man, and you know what to do with him, but his whole head bring it down to the grave with blood. So David slept with his fathers and was buried in the, was buried in the city of David. Now you realize that when you read throughout this scripture, this was David at the end of his life. And one of the things that is surprising is as he is about to die, he began to give instructions to his son 
and as he is giving instructions to his son, there are three specific instructions that he gave. And two of the instructions were people that had offended him. They had offended him and for so long, he had held this grudge. He was holding this pain. He, he, he did not forget what they did to him and he had not forgiven them. He wanted them to be punished. He could not do it by himself. But when it was now time for his son to reign, he told him, inherit these battles and deal with these matters for me. There were people that had been kind to him. He said to his son, take care of them. Let them sit at your table. Now, I want you to know that most of the times, one of the things that becomes problematic is we hold a lot of grudges as far as life is concerned. We hold a lot of these painful experiences as far as life is concerned. And at the end of the day, after a long while, after holding all these grudges and all this pain, you realize that these things are toxic. They would have ate us away. Imagine the time which David held this grudge. Imagine a time David had thought of revenging on what they had done to him. Imagine. His son had to inherit a battle that he did not start because of unforgiveness. I want to encourage you today. It does not matter what those people have done to you, the extent in which they have hurt you. But I want you to take a step. Not only are you going to forgive them, forgive yourself for not forgiving them. Start living a peaceful life. Because not forgiving people is actually punishing yourself. Because some of the people that you have not forgiven are actually, you know, moving on with their lives. They've even forgotten what they had done to you. I want you to take a step. Forgive somebody. You can't end and even at the end of your life, even unto the, you know, door or the mouth of the grave, you're still holding on to a grudge. It means you're never free. It means you have been a slave of hatred. You have been a slave of pain, a slave of bitterness, a slave of unforgiveness. I want you to free yourself today. Jesus says, come all ye that are heavenly laden and I will give you rest. I want you to understand, nothing is worth your peace of mind. Nothing is worth your joy and nothing is worth your, your, your laughter. Forgive that person today.